This is Gary Atensi with CNTV, and today we're in Denver, Colorado. Once again, we're at Timbuk Toys. Since 1993, they have provided toys for learning, laughter, and fun. I'm here at the newest location, uh, basically one company, four different stores, 40 plus people that put all this together. Toys is what you do, and I'm here with the one founder, president, Let's start off a little bit about yourself. I mean, this began in 93, um, really a small little toy store on a quiet street. Uh, we now have four locations. Um, tell me a little bit how this got started for you and, um, and, and how you began. I was actually studying urban planning and architecture, and I'm passionate about the idea of what, puts, uh, what creates a great community. So I decided that it would be fun to put together a great store to help make my community great. And that was the impetus of Timbuk Toys. I mean, that's kind of neat because you said you thought it would be fun. And now that is really in your slogan. I mean, fun is at the heart of what you do. I mean, we live in a digital age. Kids are getting cell phones, digital contraptions at who knows what age. Yet, I am, it's safe to say that the tangible toy is alive and well and in demand. Um, is that kind of exciting as you, as you expand? It's not only exciting, but it is essential for the well-being of our children. Let me ask you this. We've got um, toys that are for, for learning, laughing, fun. Um, let's start off with fun. Obviously, toys are fun, and everybody knows that. Kids love them. We love them. Um, is it exciting for your staff to see some of the toys being used right here in the store? And um, is that important to create activities right here in the store to see that as well? Oh, it's always wonderful to see children engage with the toys. Children are learning when they are playing. And the more we can get children to have fun, the more they are going to play and the more they are going to learn. And of course that is happening, especially when you equip them with the tools, such as our toys are, that help them learn and laugh and have fun. Hi there, I've got to show you one of my very favorite toys. This I call a kid magnet. I put this out in front of little kids, like, oh, maybe just a year, up to two years or so. And they pick this up and they go, wow, this is cool. And they just start pushing the buttons. And they push the buttons and they naturally learn that if you turn it back over, you get to push the buttons again. Now, obviously, there's a lot of learning that can happen with this because you've got colors. We've got shapes on this side, colors on this side. And there's even some Braille here. We can really learn some fun stuff. This is a go-to toy for little kids. When, when you see a child um, really discovering fun, if you will, um, in a way that they're not able to do uh, electronically, um, you see their minds at work and, and they're at play. Is this something parents have, have learned to experience and um, keep coming back throughout the years as their child gets older? As toy people, we think a lot about the cognitive developmental stages of childhood. And so we're always thinking about What's happening in the child's brain? What are they learning? What's happening in their social-emotional learning? What is happening in their sensory learning, their physical learning? So all of our toys have to do with helping kids learn in all of those different important developmental stages of childhood. And a lot of those things that they learn are part of our brains. They are things that, are, that we, have, we have grown to need. A child, for instance, has to learn how to crawl before they can walk. And children need to learn how to play before they're ready to grow into the thinking, feeling adults that they need to grow into. Obviously, it began as yourself with a small team. You have quite a, quite a big team, a network of uh, toy specialists. I would imagine one of the prerequisites is the fact that they, they have to really enjoy children smiling, children laughing, having a good time. Um, do they enjoy not only offering a great toy, but really providing an environment uh, where it's fun as well? 
I think it's very important that we have a fun atmosphere here at the toy store. Um, I, people tell me who work here that they love coming into work, that it is frequently an oasis for them. Um, and yes, it is important to have a fun atmosphere because if you're happy in your day-to-day -day life, you're going to be much more apt to help other people to be happy when they come, they come in to see you. Now, if you are not familiar with Mad Matter, this stuff is amazing. You may have played with some sand, some kinetic sand and stuff. This stuff flows like that as well, but it will compress down and hold its shape. So you can even do things like this. You can make Legos. Well, check this out. So we put this on here, this on here, put it in there, squish it, then take this and squish it on top of this and boop, like that, and bang got a Lego. So you can make a whole bunch of these and then build something with it. We love relevant play. They make all kinds of wonderful stuff. You gotta check out Mad Matter. Like we said before, it's easy when we see a child laughing, smiling, having a good time, but even when they're playing with a toy, there's a lot that we can't see. Um, we're talking, regardless of the age, uh, they're developing all the time. Have we, have we come to learn that playing is essential to that development? Yes, playing is absolutely essential. <laughs> and uh, there are more and more scientists who are stepping up the research that shows that that is very much the case. Speaking of the research, I mean, science is basically able to show now that um, our brains are actually able to change based on the environment and uh, the experiences that we put them through. This has to be kind of exciting as a parent as they can see that uh, they're able now to provide a toy for a child and uh, you're actually helping them learn. We are. We're helping the children learn and we hopefully are helping the parents learn as well. Let me ask you this. As I look around, I see quite a few different toys for di every type of age group. Um, is it important that you're, is one of the hats that you still um, are able to do is handpick some of these toys. Is that something that you enjoy doing throughout the years? Definitely my favorite part of this job is, is purchasing. The days that I get to spend with my rep, with my purchasing hat on, those are great days. Those are exciting days. Those are days when we're thinking about the children and just picturing everything that they're going to be learning from these amazing toys that we're finding. I also love getting to know the toy inventors from all around the world. I love getting to know the different vendors who are putting their hearts and souls into great toys that help children learn. As I look at the new location here, this, this has been around since 2015. I notice an activity room in the back. Is it important for you to continue educating parents out there how important toys are when it comes to the learning process? I think that most parents just understand that play is important, but they don't necessarily think about it all the time. And hopefully when they come into an atmosphere like this, that clicks for them and they begin to see the value of these incredible toys, which they bring into their households and they can see their children growing and learning through the play that we are helping to provide. One of the things I notice as a parent myself is the fact I, I can purchase a toy for my child, I bring it home, or maybe a game, and I find myself kind of playing with them as well. Regardless of the age, um, toys are good for brain health. Is that something that has been proven through the years? The more children can interact with their families, the more they are learning. I, I love to tell a new mother that all the toys in the world that she can provide, the best toy in the world is, is, is her own face. The, the baby loves to look at mommy's face or the face of, of their caregivers. And that is, that's one of the most important developmental um, parts of being a baby. And then from that connection that they get as the baby, they move on to spreading out, understanding more about all the other people around them and their relationships to those people. And they do a lot of that through play. Now you might think toys are just for kids. This is something that I built for my father, who um, in his later life was developed a, quite a bit of dementia. And so what I did was, this is a latches board. He loved doing things with his hands. So what I did was I made this board, took this board, and underneath the doors, I put photographs. That's a picture of my dad when he was a little boy. And there's my mom and dad. So underneath each one of these little things is a, is a picture. And I tell you, 
whenever somebody new came over to the house, Dad would pull this out and he would say, check this out. And his face would smile and he loved it. And oh boy, you can imagine how the rest of the family felt. Depending on the toy, um, is it really stimulating actually um, both sides of the brain? I mean, we all know about different sides of the brain, logical side, creative side. Depending on the, uh, on the toy, um, is it stimulating things that normally they wouldn't experience in their everyday life? Very much so. Uh, when we think about the different parts of development, we think about the cognitive development, the social development, the sensory development. A lot of those things, I think, are what you're saying have to do with both sides of the brain. This isn't just about analytical thinking. This is also about emotional thinking and emotional growth. Um, I'm holding a a beautiful little little stuffed animal right now and the relationship that a child has with their stuffed animal is often a huge building block to how they develop their sense of empathy and and connection I think one of the things that's missing in the digital world when you're stuck in front of a screen, your child's looking at a screen all day, is the, is the physical aspect of uh, not only the brain's working, but, but motor skills, major motor skills, fine motor skills, um, eye-to-hand coordination. Are all, these are all the things that basically are going on when it looks like they're just having fun. You got that. Absolutely. <laughs> um, for instance, puzzles. So simple, puzzles. And as a three-year-old starts to do puzzles, that is very much about fine motor skills, just as it is about looking at the picture and figuring out where to place the piece. Lots going on there in the simple activity of doing a puzzle. This simple cube is called Shishibo, and it happens to be one of the hottest toys it's got some little magnet in there, but look at this. You can pull it out. You can make it into all kinds of different shapes and sizes, configurations. Let's see if I can make it go right outside. There we go. Oh, see, got one little thick part there. Yep, 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 there. And then it goes into other things. Oh, this is fun. You can get more than one, put them together, and combine them, make all kinds of fun shapes. This is a great, fun puzzle. Kids watching the screen, and they're watching other kids play anymore on, like, YouTube. They're watching kids play instead of them playing themselves. Uh, they're watching other kids that are squishing, cutting, riding, jumping, and yet they're not doing that themselves. Um, shame on us as parents that we are basically not turning that off and saying, here's a toy so that you can squish, cut, and uh, get some of those motor skills as well. There's an expression that I love in with some of my toy companies, which is bring back childhood. And it's hard as a parent today to really bring back childhood the way we remember it because there is always the dis distraction of all things digital. And the children see the parents engaging with digital and they, of course, always want to model their parents. But we have to give children the chance frankly, to be bored sometimes. It's okay to send a child up to their room with a box of crayons and yeah. some paper and let them discover what it is to create. I mean, it's amazing the fact that when they're, they're touching, hearing, seeing, it's this combination of senses that basically um, elevates sensory development in, in a way that uh, a digital pad never can. We have been designed to use our bodies to use our brains, to use our eyes, to use our fingers. And we children have to practice all of those things, which you simply can't do uh, using um, in, in, in a digital world. I mean, as a parent, we all want what's best for the kids out there, yet we don't realize the power behind just purchasing a toy for them is really one of the best things we can do because we're helping them learn at their level. Um, when, a, when a parent comes in, is your staff able to help them a little bit when it comes to um, age? Um, would this be good for so-and-so? Age, is that something that you pride yourself on, that the staff can educate parents as they come through? We try very hard to keep everybody educated about all of our products. We have 
hundreds of new products coming in all the time, and so there's a lot for our staff to learn about. Um, our vendors also try to put age suggestions into their packaging. Okay. One thing that's a little tricky about age shown on a package is that it is generally an indication of safety as opposed to developmental oh, uh, age suggestion. Mm -hmm. So for instance, a toy that says that it's for three and up, that means that it doesn't have any small parts which are gonna be dangerous for children under three, but it doesn't mean that that toy isn't spectacular maybe for a 12 year old. Okay, this is called True Balance, and this was invented in Denmark by occupational and physical therapists. I don't know if I'll get it done right now, but the idea is to stack these guys up right on top of each other with only using your hand. Ah! And that's what happens. You have to get used to just letting go. And then you go, oh, wait a minute, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. And if you do do it, then do it upside down. And then with your other hand. This will keep you occupied for hours and hours and hours, and it'll massage your brain. What is required is that on the package, but that doesn't really tell you as far as development goes, which is great to have an educated staff that uh, can basically walk them through and explain to them that this would be okay for their child. People who are shopping for toys have an idea about the child for whom they are shopping. And all children are going to be different. Um, we have not only age, we also have interest. Um, some children are much more apt to enjoy quiet play. Others are want to be want rowdy play. Right. Uh, it, it definitely helps the staff to understand a little bit more about the child who is 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 going to be the recipient of this gift. Um, but we have many, many things that we can recommend for just about any parameter that you can suggest. That is exciting. I mean, it's exciting to see that toys are alive and well. You've got four locations here serving the Denver area. Um, you've got activity room here in the back. Um, do you try to get um, have guest activities, uh, guest speakers, guest play? Is that something you try to do throughout the year? Our playroom is available for all kinds of people to come in and do activities here. Our regular weekly activities include a free program with our own Mr. Paul, who does story playtime every week, uh, once a week at each of the stores. And he has a group of little children and their mommies and grandparents and nannies, and they gather around. And he does songs and reads books. And uh, gosh, it's it's many people's absolute favorite activity of the week. In addition to that, we have uh, groups who come in and, and present classes. So we have a group who brings in a band and children get to participate with music and a band. Then we have another lady who does music um, for smaller children, including uh, infants, babies. So, um, our playroom is available for all kinds of different things going on. Um, I, I frequently get phone calls from people saying, hey, I'd be interested in doing a class. And I say, great, let's figure it out and we'll put it on the schedule. Boy, now if you're into constructing, you like building things, check out this. All wood, not one drop of glue. It's all pressure fit. It's all pieces of wood and toothpicks. Now check this out. All I have to do, you want one of my business cards? Just gently press down here and whoop. This is a company called U-Gears. Really fun stuff and lots of different models to build. As we said before, this basically began as a, a tiny store on a quiet street. Your idea, what you said, was uh, to do something fun. Obviously a tour store was a, a perfect fit for you. Does this continue to be fun for you? <laughs> Running a business, yes, it's fun, <laughs> but it's sometimes hard too. I have a wonderful opportunity to work with amazing people who work here at Timbuk Toys, as well as my vast network of reps and vendors. Um, and then of course, the wonderful customers who come in. I love learning from my customers. So this gives me so many avenues of outreach.
Throughout the series here, we have been, um, Mr. Paul has been showing us a few of the toys. Um, is that important for you to educate people on some of these toys? I mean, you look at it, and you can't really even tell what it does, maybe. Maybe you're not sure uh, the extent of how it works. Is that something that you try to uh, provide here in the store, uh, where you can't really get online if you go shopping online, but actually touch and experience it as well? Yes, and when somebody comes in and says, I'm shopping for a particular child and this is the idea that I have, hopefully my staff will be able to come up with multiple uh, ideas um, in different price points, in different in different themes. I mean, for instance, I have a number of things out here on the table that have to do with space. And maybe it's a space puzzle. Maybe, maybe it is a... Uh, a toy where where the child is pretending with a rocket. Maybe it's for an older child where it's a science kit and they're actually creating a rocket. Um, so, or maybe it is a building situation where they take these wonderful little plus plus pieces and they create Saturn rocket. I mean, we're right now we're scrolling across the screen the different categories of types of toys. I mean, puzzles, games, um, stuffed animals, you name it. These are all toys that are, are helping our children grow and learn. Um, what do you see kind of for the future for Timbuk Toys? Um, what do you hope to bring in the next few years uh, that you haven't already done? I hope that we can continue to help the children of Denver to grow into tomorrow's scientists and engineers and artists and actors and wonderful parents of the future. It takes so much to become a great human being, and I think that children do definitely learn a lot of that at the beginning of their lives as they engage in play. That is excellent. Viewers, let's take a look at the bottom of the screen right there. What you're going to see is their website. First of all, on the website, um, you're going to learn quite a bit of the different manufacturers, top brands that are available to here. Um, if you can't get into one of the stores, you can basically even check it out online. You can go and do a little shopping online as well. Uh, remember, many of the stores here have, have activity rooms. If you'd like to give a class that pertaining to children, definitely uh, contact them as well. Um, you can also put together... Um, uh, a wish list. Uh, basically, if you've got a birthday coming up, great place to come in and get a gift. If you're a grandparent, you're not sure. As long as you know the age of the child and they know a little something about them, I'm sure their professional team will be able to help you out there as well. But really, what I would basically love to see out of something like this is that you become a play advocate. Basically, as a parent, a teacher, an adult, it is up to us to basically advocate play again. Like she said, bring childhood back. Make way for play. You can do that right here at Timbuk Toys and discover the fun. This is Gary Atensi with CNTV. And if you don't know, now you know.